In this video, we will discuss how we use prisms to assess fusion convergences. To do this, we first need to go over what happens to light when it passes through a prism. And you should recall that when light enters a prism, it will deviate towards its base. Let's have a look at the image here of a prism. We have its base here and the apex here. Red depicts the light, and we can see that as it passes through the prism, it bends or deviates towards the base. And the same occurs when it exits the prism. It bends towards the base. Consequently, what happens is that the image appears to shift towards the apex of the prism. So, for example, if we have a tree, the light's bouncing off the tree, passes through the prism, it will appear as if that tree shifts towards the apex. Let's take this a step further and look at what else happens when we put a prism before the eye. To do this, let's have a look at a projection diagram. Here we have the horopta, and here is our fixation target, which is a green diamond. This green diamond will stimulate the fovea of the right eye and stimulate the fovea of the left eye. These are two corresponding retinal elements. They have principal visual direction, so they will project in space straight ahead. What if I put a prism before one of the eyes? So here we have a prism. For the purposes of this illustration, this is considered the base of the prism. So this is a base out prism because the base is towards the ear rather than towards the nose. Using the principles we just went over, light bends towards the base, so we'll see that occur. Having this occur though means that the light now will stimulate a temporal point of the right eye whilst stimulating the fovea of the left eye. These are non-corresponding retinal elements. So this will give rise to diplopia and to overcome this we need a mode of fusion response. What does this look like? We will see the eye move inwards to overcome it. So remember the fovea was here? By shifting the eye inwards, the fovea will actually come to the point of where the, eye, the light has shifted. And this movement will be equivalent to the prism that we place in front of the eye. So if it's a 10 prism diopter prism, we'll see a 10 diopter movement. If it's a 20, there'll be a 20 diopter movement. If you want to think about it in degrees, um, degrees are about half of the prism diopters. So 10 prism diopters means a five degree movement. So this inward movement is called fusional convergence. Now, when we go over the prism reflex test, we'll see that other movements occur of the left eye, but let's just stay with this concept that a base out prism will lead to the image shifting onto temporal retina and to overcome this, an inward movement of the eye is required, which is fusional convergence. If we have a look at a base in prism, so this is our prism, here is the base. Again, we expect the light to bend towards the base. This time, however, we will stimulate a nasal retinal point. This again is non-corresponding, fovea and nasal point, gives rise to diplopia. And once again, we'll need a mode of fusion response to overcome this. This time, however, it will be an outward movement of the eye that is required. So we see the eye shift outwards so that we can become fovea to fovea again and so that we can regain BSV. This is a fusional divergence movement. Okay, so what did we learn from this? If you put a base out prism before the eye, we will stimulate a temporal retinal point and fusional convergence will be required to overcome it. If, on the other hand, you put a base in prism before the eye, you will stimulate a nasal retinal point and fusional divergence will be required to overcome it. Okay, that brings me to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.